Hello, hello, hello. What's good, my dolphins? Go, Va, King. Back at it again with another video. Now, the reason I'm doing this today is because it's an apology for that big break in the middle. And then that smaller break after the last video. It won't be as big as it breaks as last time. All right. Okay. Got it. Got everything. Now. Due to popular demand. It's not popular at all. It's just because I decided it and only like one friend suggested it to me. I am doing a full breakdown of the first character of the ca oh, yeah. first character of the convergence I ever made. <laughs> James Jackson. His full story. From his backstory. To his personality traits. And everything in between. Okay, let's get this started. First of all. The full breakdown of his look. The style of him. His hair, like I said last time, his hair is black. His eyes are cyan blue. <laughs> Look at me. Imagine my eyes cyan blue, and you pretty much have James Jackson. I am James Jackson. Not really, but because I, I don't have super strength, but yeah. Yeah. I look at me with cyan blue eyes and you've got James Jackson. Wears a light blue t shirt, dark blue jeans. Uh. These shoes Yeah. And um yeah. His jacket. That's a That's um very his dark red jacket is very important to him. And you'll find out what it is, what's so important about him in his backstory. He also has this, like, little, I don't know if you can see that. He has, like, a little pouch on his jeans. Yeah, we'll come to that later as well. Yeah. He's... Yeah. That's the full look of James Jackson. The full look of his transformed form, Dark Claw, is, well, it's a werewolf. What more can you get? Except his werewolf form is actually a lot. It's closer to like a dark gray or almost black. I don't have a black werewolf, so I only have a I only have a brown one, but yeah. Imagine this black, like pure black. Well not pure black, it's like a darkish grey. But it's so dark that you wouldn't 
be able to tell the difference if it was black or gray. Yeah, his fangs, his claws. Claws aren't this long, obviously. They're like normal, like, about here. And normal hand. Well, his hand's bigger, but the claws are basically out here on his big hand. Yeah, they're pretty basic for a, for a werewolf. Yeah. Okay. Passive traits. Actually, no, I'm going to base all the abilities. Passive traits, non-passive traits, aggressive, and... Yeah. His backstory will come later in the video. You'll have to stick to the end to find out uh, the entire backstory of James Jackson. His powers... Like I said... Proportional strength of a rhinoceros beetle. That's four... Like I said... Four double-decker buses... Full of passengers... On your shoulders. That's basically how strong he is. That may not even be the limit of his strength. That's just basically what... The proportional strength of a rhinoceros beetle is to a human. Logan form... Uh, Logan... I always get that mixed up. His dark claw form makes him even stronger. And he's already Yeah. With it with his beast form, he even gets heightened his senses heightened even more than they already are. Well, his sight is extremely his hearing, his smell. And his speed and stamina are increased a bit. His pure combat ability is absolutely just catapulted. Yeah. So, super strength is his main power. His secondary power is his danger sense. Like I said, it's basically spider sense, but it's like a, a pinprick in the back of the neck that the more it hurts, the worse the danger. Yeah, so it's, yeah. If it's just like someone just like pushing a pin to the back of your neck, it's not that bad, but if it, if it feels like it's someone's being, if it feels like it's being jackhammered into the back of your neck, then it's real danger. And you gotta be worried. His sense power is his incredible sight slash night vision. He can see in the dark. Side effect to that, as I've said before, is his irises glow. His cyan blue irises glow. It makes for a pretty cool effect. His resistance ability is... His resistance to heat and cold. This dude can walk through fire and be fine. And can take a dip in arctic waters and still be fine. Either one. Doesn't really matter. Heat or cold? He'll be fine. As long as it's not too hot. I mean, it's only resistance. He's not immune to heat and cold. I mean, say, if you dipped him in... If you dipped him in lava and then just made some way for him to, for gave him no way to get out, then he most likely will be burned alive. There's a, there is a limit to how much heat and cold he can take before he either freezes or burns. And his traversal power is he has incredible agility and climbing. He can swim through the tree tops better than a monkey. That. Ah. He gets that from a spider monkey. He gets his resistance to heat and cold from a tardigrade. He gets his dangerous sense from a spider. And he gets his incredible sight slash night vision from the ordinary house cat. 
The reason I'm saying this will come up in his backstory. Why he each those different animals have powers like strength, rhinoceros beetle, climbing and agility, spider monkey, danger sense, spider. I don't remember which type of spider, but I know there is a species of spider that has a acute danger sense. Uh, resistance to heat and cold from Tata Great and uh, what's it called? What did I? His sight and neither from a house cat. Yeah. And strength and sight are both increased when he goes beast. As for his weaponry, he wields a warhammer. That's his main weapon. The reason he wields a warhammer is, well, why else would you wield a warhammer? It's for smashing. <laughs> it's the smashing stuff that gets in his path. It's... It was crafted by a great smith. All these guys' weapons are crafted by a great smith to make them attributed to their abilities. Which will be discussed in the chapter of my book called Iron and Steel. His Warhammer is nearly unbreakable, so it can be used, so it can withstand the full force of his strikes, and not break. He can fall at it, full strength, at an enemy, and it, it will, the hammer will be fine. The enemy, not so much. <laughs> yeah. The Warhammer allows him to unleash his full potential. Not holding back. Because that was his problem before he was... He always held back. He didn't want to... There's no margin for error with a Warhammer. He needs to unleash his full potential to use this Warhammer properly. And get the full power of it out of a swing. Yeah. His secondary weapon is a chain. Now I know what you're thinking. He's basically a ghost rider in a way? Kind of. <laughs> but the chain isn't magical. And it has a limited range, unlike Ghost Rider Chain, which can just elongate on command. Still think that movie was freaking cool. Yes, I've seen both both Ghost Rider movies recently on Netflix. I love them. You know the ones the ones with Nicolas Cage as the writer. Yeah, both of those are freaking cool. No one can tell me otherwise. Yeah, but the chain, the chain. This weapon teaches him to focus his strength into practical, focus his strength more practically. The Warhammer teaches him to unleash his strength. The chain allows him to focus. I mean, if you've ever used a whip and you know how much focus that takes... Imagine using a metal version of that. Yeah. You need even more focus to use a chain as a weapon than a whip. Fun fact. I don't even know if this legend is on the internet or even if it's a real legend. But I read once in a book about the first man ever to use a chain in battle. Uh, it was a farmer by the name of Old Man Henderson, or... I don't remember, it starts with H. But he was a, an ordinary farmer until village, until raiders came and attacked his village. I mean, the village had guards, obviously. But he was certain he needed to protect his farm. And he was lived in the middle of ages, so he can just go into his store and grab the freaking shotgun that's usually there. 
So what he did to protect his farm and his animals is he yanked a chain off his wall and started swinging that thing around. I don't think this legend is on YouTube or anywhere that I can actually find other than that book. I don't even remember what the book's name is, so I can't help you there. But I remember that that is either a made-up legend or an actual true legend about the first man ever to use a chain in battle. And it was... He was so good in battle with that chain that that became... That there was a weapon crafted from a chain called the Chain Whip, I think. I can't remember how exactly it's called, but I'm pretty sure it's called the Chain Whip. The first, yeah, that's the legend of the first man to ever use a chain in battle, I think. Yeah. That's his weaponry. The Warhammer, the chain, and obviously, <laughs> his beast form is just, he is a weapon. A particular line, I, d I think I mentioned this in the Meet the Convergence, the episode I did the uh, video I did before this one. But there is a very particular line that James says. That James says to Nathan. And that line is. Oh, how did it go? When I'm out on the field, and I'm fighting, my hammer, my chain, those are just tools. I'm the weapon. And Nathan says, that's poetic. And then James says, what I'm trying to say is, if you rely on that suit more than yourself, you will lose. And that puts Nathan in a perspective that he is the suit. The suit may be, may be protecting him and may have all his weapons, but he's the one who needs to actually fight. His suit can't do the work for him. And it was James Jackson who said that, which will surprise you when you learn about his personality traits. Coming up next. Yeah, so those are his weapons. The chain, the warhammer. You've met his, his design, his style... Give me a second. I'll just put that up there for now. Yeah. His personality traits. When we first meet him, He seems like he doesn't seem very friendly. And that's because he's not easy to trust. No, he's not easy. I'm not saying he's not easy to trust. He's saying he doesn't trust easily. He's, um, because of his backstory, he doesn't trust people like on a dime they have to earn his trust which is basically realistic for a lot of people in this world including myself he's um he's angry for lack of a better word He um, prefers the direct approach rather than a stealthy look at things or speedy things. He prefers to rush in. That's his mindset. Best offense is a good offense in his mind. It's not the whole best offense is a good defense. For him, best offense is a good offense. <laughs> he will charge in 
before any of the other members. He's he seems um he's not headstrong though. And quack and and quack. <laughs> In fact, he's actually quite mild mannered. He actually is quite um kind once you get to know him. But when you first look at him, you'll think he's just an angry dude with a just a non trusting dude with a bit of an anger issue. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Grammar, perfect. <laughs> yeah, he He's just a And when I said that he whenever he gets angry, he turns into his beast form. That's not always true. If he reaches a, his higher levels of anger, then he gets he goes beast. Or berserk. No, no, he goes beast. The berserk is before beast. And it's because of one of the. He's just angry. And before he goes beast, when he gets that that level of anger, he's just going berserk. As I like to call it. That's why he's called the berserker. His hero name is the Berserker. Yeah. His connections to the others. As I've stated before, Amy Myers is his girlfriend. He has a almost a sisterly love for Lena. I mean, if you looked at each other, at them side to side, and the way they acted to each other, you would assume they were brother and sister, but which is not true. Which is, in fact, not true. They are not brother and sister. They're just very good friends, but you would think that they were brother and sister the way they act to each other. And even though that... Lena still isn't his best friend, and neither is it Amy. His best friend, when all the team are like acting together towards each other, and yeah, his best friend it happens to be Nathan. Him and Nathan get along so well once they actually get to know each other and start. They actually start liking each other. They realize that they have actually have a lot of similarity similarities between the two. And if you were to interview James and ask him what he thinks about all the characters, he would say Amy, Lena, and Nathan are the top three guys that he that he absolutely loves. He is that he's best friends with. He does like Sarah, and he's he's like the first one to act not no, he's not the first. The first one to be nice to Sarah is Amy. That's right. He admires Sarah for what she does. Frederick, Talia, and Claire? He's still a little unsure about them. Which, that progresses through the story. Jack? He's... Eh. He's not really too sure about Jack. I mean, he, he likes him. He just, uh... Wouldn't... If he, asked, if he was asked to hang out with Jack, then yeah, Jack, he would hang out with Jack, but... He wondered if he had another choice to like to if he had to choose between Jack and Nathan, he would go with Jason. Jane. <laughs> if he had the choice to go with either Jack or Nathan, he would go with Nathan, not Jack. And Jason, the leader, this is what he would say about later about Jason. Do I like Jason? Nah. But do I respect him? <laughs> yeah, all right. You got me there. He's not too fond of Jason, but he does respect him. And that's... Some would argue that that's better than just than liking someone. Respecting them. He has very high respect for Jason. 
Jason even looks at James as his second in command. At times. At other times, he looks at Sarah. Jason looks at Sarah as his second in command. Who am I missing? Frederick, Talia, Claire. Sarah, Jason. Jack, Talia. Uh, Jack, Amy, Lena, Nathan. No, that's all of them. I was sure I was missing someone. His position on the team. He's the team's brawler. He's the strongest. He's the most dangerous sensitive. And he's the one... Yeah, he, he's the brawler. He prefers to be up... Like I said, he prefers to be up front and lead the charge. In most battles, he'll be the first one to attack. And you don't want to get in a boxing match with James Jackson. <laughs> what am I forgetting to mention? Something about James that I'm... Oh, yeah. The thing about James... Is that no matter what, he will protect his friends. He would lay down his life for any one of the group, including Frederick, Claire, and Talia, once they join the gang. And this is seen in the last chapter of the book, where he takes a hit. And I mean a, a hit. He takes a hit that would most certainly have killed Lena. Yeah, I'm going to say it's Lena. But because it's a blast of fire, he takes it because he knows he will most likely be able to survive it. But he is damn well close not being, not surviving. Because he was not expecting it to be as hot as it was. He's hit, nearly dies, if it wasn't for Sarah. But he's not the only one in the final battle to almost die. Yeah. When they go up against the Overlord, before they turn Claire, Frederick, and Talia, James, Nathan, and Sarah all combat the Overlord. Because they are the three strongest. Amy and Lena go up against Claire. Frederick battles Jason. And Jack versus Talia. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. He's been fighting. He's not a hero to begin with. I mean, he's not even a fighter to begin with. He prefers, before he had to, you know, he prefers to stay out of a fight because he knows he'll win. That's why he doesn't always fight because he knows he's strong enough to win. He doesn't start fights, but he damn well ends them. The backstory. Now, this is what you all, you guys all came to see, to hear. The full backstory of James Jackson. Let's start off with something simple. Something simple. The fact that James Jackson was not born. He was built. 
He wasn't born. He was built. And I'm not talking Frankenstein style. He was not physically built. Like freaking Frankenstein. But closer to... It wasn't built like a robot either. No, he is flesh and blood. Closer to how they made um, they made dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. That's pretty much how he was built. He's genetically engineered to be a superhuman. He was in a lab. He was built built in a lab. But he wasn't built for the intention of good. He was built to be a weapon. He was built to be an ultimate weapon. There is, in fact, a rewrite that Danger Sense that he has in, his, in the back of his neck. And it's not actually him. It doesn't actually get that sense. I mean, he, yes, he does, but the reason there is a chip in the back of his neck that activates whenever the danger is sensed. His mind senses the danger, but the chip in, his be- in the back of his neck actually alerts him. That's the pain every time he senses danger. And that chip comes with a rewrite. No, no not a rewrite, uh... It comes with what I like to call a commanding officer override. Or the COO. The commanding officer override. That was put in his neck when he was three. And he was to be used as a weapon in the army. Commanding officer override is... Someone has to say the uh, word to activate it is the saying to activate it is um I had something written down I don't remember what I his commanding officer they have to say it in a particular voice Like, Ten Hut Soldier, or... Stand up, soldier! And he just goes, like, still. Sir, yes, sir. And he carries out a task. And the way to deactivate it... Is... At ease. And the way to permanently disable it from that particular person is dismissed. I can't remember what the uh, way to actually activate it and voice voice lock on it. But the person who gains the um gains the commanding over of the commanding officer override Who do you think gained the commanding officer override? Let me know in the chat or down in the comments who you think got the commanding officer override. No, seriously, put it in the chat, like right now. All of you watching, who gains the commanding officer override? I'll give you 10 seconds to decide. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
person who gains the commanding officer override. You people would think I would say either Jason or Nathan. Nope. Then some people would think maybe it's Amy. No, she would never say anything in that voice. And it's not Frederick, Talia, or Claire either. Thank goodness. That leaves Lena, Sarah, and Jack. It's not Jack. It's one of the girls. It's not Lena. The person who gets the commanding officer override is, in fact, Sarah Palmer. That was not who you were expecting, was it? Yeah. Nobody would guess that the most powerful person in the entire group got the commanding officer override for James. And he doesn't even know it's programmed into his mind until it's actually activated. Yeah. Sarah becomes his commanding officer. If had James had been turned into the weapon he was made to be, and he was actually in the army, he could never achieve a rank above um, what was it, Colonel? He could never achieve General or the two stages below General. He could never reach is it Captain? He can never achieve a rank above Captain? I think that's it, yeah. He can never achieve a rank above Captain. I'm just going to say that. He can never, if he had gone into the army, he could never have achieved a rank above Captain. So he would always have someone to take orders from. And no matter how many someone tries, if he's already got a commanding officer, no one can take, a, take him over. That, because like I said, it voice locks. He will only take orders from that person. And no matter what, he will not stop until the order is, until the order is... Is it um, completed? And the task he is ordered to do is completed. No matter what, he will not stop. He basically becomes an unstoppable force. And ain't no unmovable object stopping this force. Okay, there is. I lie. There is one way for, to get him to stop uh, that order is if the commanding officer says, "Jane says." Something like enough soldier or something like that. Like ten huts or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But back to him in the lab. He wasn't the only experiment. There were others. He was the first human subject. First human to ever be created in a test tube. He had parents, but they were because he, someone mixed the DNA of the man and the, the, the father and the mother and put them into the tube with the DNA of rhinoceros beetle, spider monkey, spider, uh, tardigrade and house cat. They did not what. They did not expect the results. Oh no, they expected results, but they didn't know what abilities he was going to get from the particular animals. And let's just say he's kind of glad he didn't get the web spinning of the of the spider. Because he never because he would have wouldn't have minded if it came out of his wrist like Spider-Man, but there were um other areas they could have come out of 
And yeah, he was not looking too forward to that. So he's glad he did not get the web spinning. The web slinging ability of a spider. He wouldn't have minded the uh, regenerative capabilities of the Tardigrade. He wouldn't have minded like, the healing factor or anything. But he didn't get that. He only got the resistance. He, he doesn't mind that, though. But he is really glad he got the strength of a rhinoceros beetle. He wouldn't have minded the armor of one, either. But he's really glad he got the strength. Yeah. He was created in a lab. And he was kept in that lab until he was six. Which is when the father figured out what they were going to do to him. He thought he was just... The man who, who was said to be his father. Thought they were creating a hero. He didn't know they were creating a weapon. So that night, when they when he found out what they were going to use James for, it, he broke him out with his mother alongside, and they lived in a low in a remote house for three years. So he was nine when it when it happened. They were found. He was left on his own. His father... His mother was captured. And his father was executed. Right in front of him. And there was nothing he could have done. Because they had made particular handcuffs. Just for James. They were energy couplings. And he could not... No matter how much he tried. He could not break them. They were made specifically for him. And he hadn't even reached, which is not really hard because he had not reached his full strength level yet. But he was left on his own. He managed to escape. His mother cut his, cut his bonds, were able to unlock his bonds, and told him to run. And that's what he did. He ran. For all... But he did not know what happened to his mother. For all he knows, she is still out there. And that's what he keeps believing. He keeps believing that his mother is out there somewhere. And he's still looking for her. He knows his father is dead. But he doesn't. he's not sure about his mother. Because after he ran, he heard no gunshot. Or slice or anything. He didn't hear anything. That would suggest that his mother is dead. He keeps believing that his mother is out there somewhere. And he's still looking for her. For the next... Yeah, for the next five years... He is... Surviving. In the forest. Alone. He hunts his own food, he cooks, he he finds fresh water sources. He live he can no longer go back to that house because he knows it's not it's most likely not safe. <clears throat> but he's living alone in the forest. And at the age of twelve is when He gets this. At the age of 12 is when he's bitten. And turned into a beast. The reason he doesn't fully lose control under the light of a full moon. Is because he wasn't bitten by an ordinary werewolf. He was bitten by a lord werewolf. And lords are the ones who can change can change no matter what. As long as they either get angry or they have enough focus within themselves 
to control to control their transformations at will. He got all the good stuff, but none of the bad stuff. He will not change unless he chooses to under the light of the full moon. He has he has a choice under the full moon if he wants to change or not. He does not have to. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, but he... And throughout the adventures, it really... <coughs> the first story with him is every time he gets angry, he changes. But thanks to Sarah and a few others, other things that happen to him, by book three, he will have full control of his beast, and he will transform anytime he deems worthy. He deems necessary. Not worthy. Necessary. He will no longer change when he gets angry. He will transform only at will. Should it be book three or book four? I'm not sure you're actually going to put it off to book four. No, I don't know how many books are going to be in my story, but I'm looking for a map for a minimum of five. Yeah. He lived alone in a cave. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. For three years until he was bitten. And after that, he still lived alone for the next two years. Until, I mean, he's 16 now. And the journey we see him, he is 16. So for two years, he lived among a nice, he lived among a family. He was adopted by the age of 14. He was adopted by the age of 14, and for two years, he lived with a nice family, which accepted him for what he was. The monster and all. The man who was... The man who looked after him, he actually told him to control his rage, or at least... Aim it. No, he doesn't. He doesn't teach him to control his age. He teaches him to aim his anger. When the convergence happens, he's blasted. Every character that is in the convergence, aside from Talia, Frederick, and Claire, are. are pulled in to the same place by a rainbow diamond portal. A rainbow portal in the shape of a diamond. He gets pulled in, and as soon as he's sucked in, the portal disappears. And each portal leads to the same person. Each, each of the seven, of the other seven, from James to Jack, James, Amy, Nathan, Lena, Jason, Sarah, Jack. He leads all of those guys to the same spot, and they're brought to that spot by a wizard who knows that they might have the capability to. Save the world. Because all the other heroes. Because they are the only seven. That haven't been. Kidnapped. Captured. That haven't been. Brought to. That. The overlord hasn't taken over. Because he doesn't know those seven exist. When he finds out about the seven. He realizes that he will not be able to pierce. The protective spell that Sarah has on them. So he finds three others. Frederick, Talia, and Claire. 
Yeah, the first time he ever meets the group, he starts acting like, I don't need you guys. I, I'm strong enough to do this on my own. And he gets into an argument and later a battle with Nathan. Okay. I want you guys to figure it out. Who do you think would win in a fight? James or Nathan? Let me know down in the comments or in the in the poll on who you guys think would win the battle. And just because I'm biased on James, it doesn't mean he would, in fact, win. James versus Nathan, who do you think actually wins the battle? Or who would win the death battle? For those of you who said James, I don't know. You'll have to find out in the Superhero Royal Rumble. Just so you know, these are the only... James and Nathan are the only two of my OCs that I'm putting in the Superhero Royal Rumble. The Only James and Nathan. My, those are the only two OCs, original characters that I have that I'm putting in the Superhero Royal Rumble. James, Claire... Jason, Claire, Sarah, none of the rest are going to appear in it. Unless, unless you want to see Amy versus Lena. If there was no question that I was going to put James and Nathan in the superhero role, but if you want to see who would win between Lena and Amy, leave it down in the comments or the poll. Either one. If you guys want to see who would win between Lena and Amy, yeah. Now, that was the back most of the backstory of James. Yeah. And Ever since he was broken out and realized he was going to be used as a weapon, he's held a grudge against the company who made him for, I don't know, for ever since he found out about that he was going to be used as a weapon. And he actually gets a friend. A pet. Another experiment of this company. Three characters actually get... Uh, like little sidekicks or something like pets James is one of them one is an ordinary creature one is a prehistoric creature and the last is a mythical creature James And those three pets are, in fact, <sighs> the mythical creature is a phoenix. The prehistoric creature is a velociraptor. And the real life creature that's not extinct is just a simple monkey. Phoenix, raptor, monkey. Can you guess who gets who? I mean, who gets what? I'll just tell you. Sarah gets the phoenix. Amy. No, actually, no, not Amy. Oh, hang on. Was I was it Sarah or was it Talia that I gave the Phoenix to? No, no, it was it was Sarah. Was it Claire who got the little raptor? No, she can turn into a little raptor. Oh, 
Oh, oh yeah. Frederick gets the monkey. Oh, yeah. The phoenix name is Phosphor. The monkey's name... Why did I call the monkey? I called the phoenix Phosphor, because... Yeah. I called the dino, the uh, little raptor, uh, Striker, because that I just thought that that fits a, a raptor. Yeah, the raptor is James's. And the monkey, I don't remember what I called the monkey. You know what? Give me suggestions. Phosphor, Striker, and what do you think I should call the monkey? And what species of monkey you're asking? It's not a spider monkey. Um, it's not a howler monkey. It's not a capuchin. It's not a con top tamarin. What species of monkey was it? One second, guys. B is of monkey species of monkeys. Oh, what species of monkey was it? Hang on. Sorry, guys. I have to... Think about what species of monkey. He's not an ape. He's not a, like a chimp or a gorilla or an orangutan or anything. He has a tail. That's what he is. The monkey is a com common squirrel monkey. Not very big, but not very small either. He's basically the generic monkey. A common squirrel monkey. James gets a little raptor. Phosphor, striker, and whatever you guys pick to be the name of the name of the monkey. I think I'm going to go with Martin. Martin the monkey. But if you guys have a better name for it, then leave it down in the comments. Or the poll. Yep, that is everything you need to know about James Jackson. James, where'd you go? <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. That's everything you need to know about James. If there's anything else you want to know, If you think there is something that I've missed, if you think there's need, 
there's more to James than you think or than I think, let me know. See what you guys would come up with. Next time, you have a choice of three. I will either do Jason, Lena, or Nathan. Let me know down in the comments below. Not in the poll this time. Let me know down in the comments. Out of the three I have just said, who do you want me to do? Jason, Lena, or Nathan? Yeah. And you know what I just remembered, guys? I didn't do my outro last time. You know the outro I do that I should do after every video? I didn't do it. Well, I'm going to now. So remember, if you guys like the like this video, make sure you shove a bottle in that like button's face. And if you haven't already, Unrelenting force the heck of that subscribe button. Give that bell a little ring a ding ding too, so you'll never miss another video. And until next time, Dover King out with a false rotor.